What is up my spectacular viewers, it's Garrett, and today I'm bringing you a different type of video. I am going to describe a few various ways that you can harden your bronze cast. Um, this will be primarily focused on blades, but um, can be applied to any sort of, of, of cast that you're making. I've read about half a dozen top uh, articles on the topic, and uh, condensed it down to this three-step program in about a 10-minute video. But if any of you have a different method than the ones I'm about to describe, please comment below and tell me how wrong I am. Also, I will be testing each of these processes individually and collectively in a future video. Work hardening is a is the easiest process which I will describe in this video, as most metals, ferrous and non-ferrous, can be work hardened, but each metal and alloy will harden to a different level and at different rates. Worthy of note, um, tin copper bronzes can only be hardened through work hardening. This has to do with a, a property of the alloy, but it is worthy to note. The process of work hardening is done by changing the grain structure of the material, which in turn makes dislocations or bending, etc., less likely, uh, thus making the material harder. This typically is done by rolling the material, but in the case of your average backyard smith, hammering to work harden your blade or any object. Simply hammer the blade edge with a peen side of a ball peen hammer repeatedly. Each blow from the hammer will shift some some material causing dents to appear on your blade, but this is what causes the increased hardness and can be later sanded off. Also, worthy of note, uh, when you're sanding with a belt sander um, or an angle grinder, ensure the material does not get too hot as this will begin to anneal the metal. I'll describe annealing in further detail later, but for easy reference, if the material is too hot to touch, then it is getting too hot, and so it is best to just use paper or sandpaper sometimes. Next up, we have quenching. Drink cactus juice. It'll quench you. Nothing's quenchier. It's the quenchiest. I'm sure many of you are familiar with quenching with regard to steel. Quenching is a process of heating a, met a metal to high temperature, about 1600 degrees Fahrenheit for our purposes, uh, then rapidly cooling the metal. It is important for bladesmiths as the quenching process causes a crystal structure known as martensite to form, and this martensite crystal formation is extremely hard. Unlike steel, however, which for the most part always forms this martensite crystal formation, only certain bronze alloys will get harder from quenching, of which common alloys which can be hardened from quenching include aluminum bronze, nickel bronze, manganese bronze, and a few brass alloys. Other bronzes actually become softer from a quenching process. For alloys which do harden from quenching, they do so by a martensitic type reaction. It is important to note that uh, aluminum bronzes with over an 11.5% aluminum content are prone to cracking when quenched. It is also worthy of note that tempering is common to improve the toughness and ductility of your cast, uh, similar to steel. And just a, just a safety reminder, it is important because to, uh, to, to temper your, your blade, because if you swing on something and your blade cracks, it's better to have it bend than to have you know, the top half of your sword break off and go flying. It's kind of dangerous. And lastly, for the hardening techniques, we have precipitation. Copper nickel, copper chromium, copper zirconium, and copper beryllium bronzes, as well as a few others, are hardened by precipitation. Actually, in the case of copper nickel, it is spinodal hardening, but since the process is exact, essentially the same, I'm including it in uh, the precipitation group. First, a little background information. When casting, much of the alloying material will concentrate in the hot center of the cast, leaving the faster cooling outs, outer sides of the cast as more or less base metal. This is because of the solubility of the alloying agent, but that is beyond the scope of this video, and quite frankly, the scope of my understanding. If there are any uh, professional metallurgists in the uh, watching this, comment below and explain it. I will pin your, uh, pin your comment, perhaps. So how do we bring out those pesky alloying agents to the blade edge of the material? Well, we stick it in the oven at 400 for three hours. Well, sort of. In order to precipitate out the alloyed me metal, the cast needs to be put at a raised temperature for hours, typically around 300 degrees Fahrenheit for anywhere between 3 to 36 hours. Now referring to my joke from earlier, most people have access to an, an oven, oven which can easily reach 300 degrees F. But, as with many things, it's not quite so simple. Each alloy has a certain precipitating temperature and duration, so I recommend doing some research into your specific alloy. Um, if you don't know your, what your, the alloy content of your metal is, um, you can always try guessing and checking the hardness after the process. Finally, cold working prior 
to precipitation seems to increase the effectiveness of the heat treatment, cold working being work hardening. And finally, uh, annealing. Annealing actually doesn't harden a material, it actually does the opposite. Um, but it is important for those who want to rework a material. Uh, it, it, it essentially does undoes all the hardening from a work hardening process and can be done by raising your metal to a low temperature about three to five hundred degrees and allowing it to slowly cool in the air. In conclusion, I would recommend work hardening for most backyard smiths as it is fairly straightforward and does a good enough job hardening the metal. But if you're looking for a particularly hard material, then doing a bit of research, then applying the other two methods can be done fairly easily. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all learned something useful and have a wonderful day.